Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being part of today's Daily Connections. Uh, today is Wednesday. It's the 29th of April. And today we're going to be talking about listening. Uh, today's topic is listen well. My name is Seneca Wah. I'm with your Clear Next Step. And these Daily Connection calls are part of our ongoing mission to help everybody have a better workday so that we can have better evenings and better weekends and use our free time, our discretionary time to build better communities. So um, as we're talking about listening, this is timely right now in the context of COVID-19, in the context of the, um, the quarantines that we've been experiencing and in the context of the conversations that are beginning around opening places up and opening um, uh, businesses up and opening churches up and, and the, the sequence and opening states up, uh, the, the sequence of that is gonna be interesting um, and, and definitely something to watch. And so I think our listening skills really paying attention to it and really listening to what the other person is saying um, and what perhaps they're not saying, um, I think will be really, really important. Um, but I think another reality is the listening skills that I'm going to share in this conversation right now are things that we need to keep brushing up on all of the time, right? These are listening skills is not unique to April of 2020. We need to always have good listening skills. So I'm going to invite us to um, think about these uh, listening skills in the context of listening well. Um, I'm reasonably confident, like I said, that these words will still apply to us long after the world has recovered from COVID-19. Um, but I think right now we've got to brush up on those skills. If you're feeling isolated and you've been out of practice listening to others, it's probably a good idea to brush up on that. Um, if you have been uh, quarantined with a group of people, a small family network, for example, within your household, and you have uh, developed the ability to tune them out, uh, perhaps listening skills is something we need to refresh on. If you have been in your organization a leader or a driver of decision making or a driver of meetings or a driver of conversations, and you've been doing more of the talking than the listening, uh, then perhaps, you know, brushing up on these listening skills is a good idea. So uh, here are a couple of truths. So I've got four truths about listening and then we'll, we'll dive into each one of them. So the first truth about listening is listening is about more than our ears. So listening doesn't just happen with our ears. It's more than that. It's more involved in that. Um, in this world of social distancing, for sure, listening involves uh, reading a text perhaps or listening to um, uh, engaging with someone in a phone conversation. It involves um, paying attention to the, the silence as well. So it's not just listening to what they say, but it's also um, paying attention to the silences or the elapsed time, the space between conversations. Um, one of the examples that I've seen just during COVID-19 is a good friend of mine uh, sent me a text the other day that sort of started with, hey, I hadn't heard from you in a bit. Are you okay? And so this is clearly a friend who was listening in to the silences, listening to the space, and it didn't involve her ears at all. Our whole conversation was on chat um, or in a, you know, a phone text chat. So it's um, paying attention to, to the, the spaces, the white space and the silence. I think one more face-to-face, -face, of course, listening involves the nonverbals, right? That's nobody um, would, would argue with that, that it involves watching the nonverbals, you know, seeing the, the body language, are they closed off, are they open, are they warm, are they, um, are they furrowing their brow, right? What's going on with the nonverbals? Um, but it's also the pace that we're moving and uh, the, the words that we're choosing and the are we, are we um, jumping to hyperbole? Are we using exaggerated speech? Are we using calm speech? Um, just paying attention to all of that. Um, I think uh, hint language is one of the things that I have long used and um, have worked on trying to adjust. So I'll say things like, um, it would be nice if, and what I really mean by it would be nice if is, hey listener, would you please take this action? And so learning to overcome my own hint language. But as a listener, we have to uh, just be aware of hint language, uh, what people are offering. I had an exchange with my daughter this morning and we talked about something and she came back to me about an hour later and said, so what I heard were these words and what I understood was this message. Uh, did I take your hint right? It was just really lovely to, to know that she speaks mom. Um, <laughs> she's, you know, 15 and she speaks mom. Yay, 16 and she speaks mom. Um, but just paying attention to that, it's, it's more than just your ears, right? It's using your brain. Um, we also have to consciously take action to listen, right? We have to close the book that we were reading or look away from the screen, uh, engage that, pick up the phone to call someone, right? So it's a, it's a physical manifestation of listening. 
So here are some tips on that. So some tips for um, adapting to the truth that listening involves more than just our ears. Um, if you're together, face the other person, right? If you happen to be in the same space, put down whatever you were doing and turn and face the other person. Make that eye contact, nod and lean in and take notes if it makes sense to do so. Um, use your imagination to picture what they're saying. Um, if you're distanced, then, uh, you know, use your words in, um, in text format or use pictures or emojis to really um, be present in that conversation and, and turn off all the other distractions that are there to be present. Um, maybe scroll back through your last text from them and kind of see what the white spaces are saying as well. So truth number two about listening. Truth one is uh, listening involves more than just our ears. Truth two, listening is not about me. Darn it. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Listening is not about me. It is always and forever about the other person. If I am listening to respond, then I've made it about me. If I'm listening to pass the time until I can talk, then I've made it about me. If I'm listening genuinely to hear you, to understand you, to, to, to really tune into what the other person is saying, to get it, now it's about them. And that's what we need to pay attention to. Listening is about them. It needs to not be about me and when I want to chime in and what I want to say and how I want to react or respond to this. It's about the other person and what they're doing. Um, I had a painful learning of this in my career experience, and I teach this in my communication classes all the time. Um, the, the moment when I was engaged in a conversation with the executive sponsor on a project I was working on. And I was giving her what I thought was my best listening, right? I was nodding along when she said stuff and I was chiming in or, um, and I was, you know, smiling when she smiled, I was frowning when she frowned. And I was just hanging on her every word, you know, leaning in, really engaged in that conversation. And I watched her nonverbals change and I watched her kind of distance herself from the conversation and cross her arms and start to scowl. And, and I watched her, you know, demonstrate signs of just frustration. And all of a sudden she leans across her table and she, she taps her finger on the, on the pad folio that I brought with me. She says, Seneca, I need you to write that down. I'm not sure you're listening to me. And I had this wonderful gift that she had given me the, the first time that it became abundantly obvious in my professional career that, you know, communication listening is an art, which means the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, not me. I am not a good listener if you don't think so, right? If she did not believe my listening skills to be beautiful, they were not. And so it really is about that other person. So what are your tips when you remember that listening is not about me? It's always and forever about the other person. Um, give them feedback along the way, right? The nodding, the smiling, the engaging in conversations. If they're a person that likes to see you write stuff down, then, then write stuff down. Um, wait for a pause in their words and ask a clarifying question. Uh, demonstrate empathy in ways that you can say, oh, I, I understand where you're coming from on that. I, I see what you're saying, or I hear you, I genuinely hear, but engage in that conversation so that they know that you're there. And even in distance, I mean, that can be over the phone, that can be in a chat exchange, um, that can be in the Microsoft Teams meetings that you're having or in Zoom, um, nodding along, you know, we're waving thumbs up in your window, doing something so that the other person knows that you're paying attention. Truth three, listening requires managing me. So I've already said that it's not about the other person, right? And it involves my whole self, but it also requires like intentional, deliberate self-management. Sometimes I try to do stuff while I listen. I'm sure no one on the phone is guilty of anything like that. But sometimes while I listen to someone, I try to do other stuff. Stop. Multitasking is a myth. That is something else I teach in our project management classes. It comes out all the time. Multitasking is a myth. Your brain doesn't really do multiple things at the same time. It does one and then it switches over to the other and then it switches back and switches over and switches back. And some of us switch really quickly and so you don't notice how fast we moved. But multitasking is a myth. I cannot focus on something else while I'm multitasking. Sometimes, maybe this doesn't happen to you, but sometimes people talk longer than I was prepared to listen. Uh, I, you know, they got started talking and I was ready to listen for two or three minutes and we're on minute seven and oh my goodness, they're still going, right? Um, so what do we do? What do we do about this? Before they start talking, take what you know about them and what you know about you and make the appropriate amount of time, either block it in your own head and say, okay, Seneca, you know, buck it up or you're going to listen for 10 whole minutes because you know they're a talker or an exchange in a conversation with the other person that says, hey, I've got about five minutes or I've got about seven minutes or um, do something so that you've got a time frame on there so you don't tune out inadvertently. Do what you need to do to, to manage you, to set those boundaries. 
uh, years ago when Spencer and I were, um, I just recall a conversation, my, my husband, we've been married for like 23 years, just blissfully married. And um, I recall this, this moment when I had come back from a, um, a day of teaching and I had some stories to tell, man, I'm a storyteller. I had stories to tell. And I walk in the garage door and he's, he's there to greet me with a, a glass of red wine in his hand. Cause you know, that's what we did in the day. And that was really lovely. Um, and I'm like, honey, you're never going to believe what happened today. And I start to, I like, I take a, a deep breath because I'm getting geared up for the long story that I'm about to tell. And he goes like this. He sticks his hand in front of my face. And he says, wait, what? He says, wait, before you say another word, is this a story to entertain or are you going to need me to take action? And so he asks this clarifying question, like he put the boundaries on it. Um, it was really, really wonderful. Like, oh no, honey, this one's pure, pure entertainment. Um, so put the boundaries on it uh, before you try and listen so you can self-manage. Sometimes, um, and again, this probably doesn't happen to you. Sometimes people talk about things I don't relate to or things I'm not interested in or that aren't interesting to me or things that I, I just, I don't have any knowledge about. Um, so what do I do? Uh, as I, as that person begins talking, here's a thing that I tell myself. I don't know much about golf. I really don't, but I know that I like you and I'm curious as to what it is that you like about golf. I don't know much about, uh, dog pedicures. I, I, that's not a topic that interests me to the core, but I'm really interested in you. And that's what allows me to focus on that conversation. This seems to be important to you, so I'll focus on you. So um, more self-management techniques. Uh, sometimes I'm ready to chime in to the point, uh, I'm so ready to chime in with what I want to say that I might interrupt you. Uh, stop, stop interrupting, right? We do this or finish your sentences. Uh, these are not great listening techniques. It turns out there are some people deeply, deeply distressed when we finish their sentences. Don't do that, right? Um, so I, years ago, I had a, a coach and um, he'd actually taken one of my business cards and on the back, so when, when I was holding it, um, to, to anyone else who could see the back, it just looked like a regular business card. But on the side that was facing me that I could pick up and sort of hold as a talisman in my hands, on the side that was facing me, it said, um, Seneca, stop interrupting, right? It just said, stop. Like this was a message for me, a physical touchstone to remind myself not to interrupt. And it worked. It got me out of the habit of interrupting. Um, and sometimes, uh, these are all under the tips or under the guise of, of self-management. Sometimes I judge, man, um, that's not a part of good listening, right? It's, uh, oh, I, I, that person is just wrong. They're out to lunch. They're not on the same page. Um, we, we do this, maybe not, um, maybe not overtly. Maybe we don't look at someone and say, you're an idiot. Um, uh, but we, we judge, right? We think it on the inside. And, um, so I'm going to advocate for curiosity. Try this sentence. I just said in my head that that person is wrong or out of touch or something less than, and um, I'm judging here. And then like, I literally say to myself, yikes, that's not a thing I wanna do. Let me reframe this to curiosity. I'm curious. I'm curious as to why you think that. I'm curious as to how you got to that conclusion. I'm curious. So reframe your judgment to, to curiosity um, and that can help your listening skills. So we'll get to truth four. Uh, truth four, listening involves participation. So we talked about uh, it's more than just your ears, right? We talked about that it's not about me, it's always about them, but it does involve managing me. Um, and, and it actually involves participation. So this is where it's okay to ask clarifying questions. I'm not judging questions, not, well, have you tried this? Because duh, that'd be obvious. Um, but in, instead of that, ask clarifying questions, offer support, um, respond to questions or requests for information with like an answer. If someone says, hey, how was your day? Um, and you can answer fine. How was yours? But if they ask you again, uh, mine was fine, but tell me about yours. Then this is the part where you tell them about your day, right? You engage, you, you discuss, you, you do a back and forth, a volley, a lobbing with the conversation. Um, these are all great ways to engage. Um, offering your own perspective or your own idea is a way. Um, I offer, um, when you're listening um, and there's a, a, a pause, I offer the phrase, may I share some thoughts? May I offer my opinion? So instead of just barreling right in there, offer may I. Um, engage in the conversation. If you see that the conversation is taking a turn for the dark, maybe engage in the conversation and steer it towards something more positive, uh, less dark. Uh, as the conversation wraps down or winds down, uh, do something to summarize or, or do that call to action. These are things that we can do to engage and to connect with someone else while we're listening. 
So hopefully these are useful. They're not unique to COVID-19, but I think we need to brush up on our listening skills because I think we've been listening to um, the, the things that are coming on our Facebook feeds probably more than uh, the people in our lives. Mm -hmm.